Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the 9D notes on functions as mappings. At the end of this, you should be able to say that I can map each member of the domain to the range, and then also that I can find the equation of a function given the function mapping. All right, so let's uh, jump straight into it, and let's look at example 5 from page 277. It says consider the function f such that x is converted into x squared for the domain negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So what they're asking us to do here is figure out um, what these are going to map to. So meaning if you plug in the x, what are you going to get for your y? Right? So if we have f of x is x squared, then we're going to plug each one of these in and see what we get. So really what we're doing is we're just making a t-chart. All right, so x, and then instead of y, I like to put what y equals, which is x squared. So I'm just going to plug all these in and see what we get. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. And 2 squared is 4. Okay, so we end up getting that there, and really that's... Um, that's all we really need to figure out. All right, and yeah, I mean, if we if we really wanted to graph it, which it wouldn't hurt because we're gonna have to do some of that stuff later on. We just graph this thing here. You know, we go to two and a negative two, and we go all the way up to four. So at negative two, we're at four. Negative one, we're at one. Zero, we're at zero. One, we're at one. Two, we're at. Four, so it's just a nice little parabola. Oops. And guess what the equation of that parabola is? It's y equals x squared, which is what this is here. All right. Okay, let's take a look at some more examples. This is example six from page 277. So consider the function p such that x is converted into plus or minus the square root of x for the domain 0, 1, 4, and 9. So, same thing. Just make ourselves a little t-chart. I'm going to write, rewrite it as y equals plus or minus the square root of x. So, again, we can make our little t-chart. Square root, oops, not square root x over here on the other side. x equals, and then plus or minus the square root of x. Okay? So, we, uh, we're going to plug in 0, 1, 4, and 9. So when you plug in 0, you get plus or minus the square root of 0, which is just 0. You don't need to put plus and minus 0. But you plug in 1, square root of 1 is 1, but it's plus 1, and it's also negative 1. Plug in 4, and that is 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. So that would be positive 2 and negative 2. And then you plug in 9, and you get 3 out, so that's positive 3 and negative 3. All right? So this is what we get out for our um, for the range, really. And again, you could graph that if you wanted to. Or also, another way to, to represent it is these little, this function mapping, which looks like a couple of big Easter eggs. And over here, you put your domain, so domain here, and then the range here. So we plugged in 0, 1, 4, and 9, right? So when we plugged in, 0, out came 0. So we draw an arrow from 0 to 0. And whenever you do function mapping, you always draw curved lines, just because the straight lines can start to get confusing. So you draw curved lines. When you plug in 1, you get positive 1, and you also get negative 1. So draw a couple curved lines to there, usually with arrows. And then when you plugged in, we plugged in four. We got two and negative two. So we got that. We got that. And when we plugged in nine, we got three and negative three. So we got that. So that's another way to express it. All right, let's look at another example. And this is example seven from page 278. This one actually 
starts us with a function mapping and it maps set x, which this is x, onto set y. Okay. Using set notation, write down the members of the domain and the range. So now we're going to go kind of back to what um, these previous examples were basically just undoing what we just did. So for A, we're going to write the domain and the range in our function notation. So domain, we just would put equal to, and then we draw the brackets for indicating that it's a set of numbers and it's going to be negative 2. If we write it in order, we do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And officially it doesn't have to be in order, it just looks a little bit nicer. And then the range is all these numbers here. And again, those don't have to be in any particular order either. I'm just going to put them in numerical order. So negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, 2, and 5. All right. Uh, second part, find the equation of the function. So they give us this here, and we actually want to figure out what the equation is that gives us this m mapping. Okay, so um, again, one way to do it would be, it's kind of nice to actually have a, a, a table of values, and then we can... And then we can graph it and see what it looks like. So we can do x and y here. We don't know what the function is, so we can't put that in for the y. But we know that, <clears throat> excuse me, negative 2 goes to negative 7. 0 goes to negative 1. 1 goes to 2. 2 goes to 5. And negative 1 maps to negative 4. Okay, so again, something that might make this handy is to actually draw a graph and see what this looks like. So let's see, the x's are no big deal, it's just from negative 2 to positive 2, and then the y's, we got to go all the way down to negative 7, and then all the way up to 4. All right, on my crooked graph, uh, we'll go with it. So negative 2 is at negative 7, so there's a point. 0 is at negative 1, 1 is at 2, 2 is at, oops, we got to go to 5, 2 is at 5, and then negative 1 is at negative 4. And that makes a nice straight line here, so we know that it's a linear equation. So to come up with the equation for that there, um, we did really all we have to do is figure out what the y-intercept is, which we know the y-intercept is right here. So then the only other thing we need to know is the slope. So really, just the easiest way to do the slope is just to count from point to point since we've already graphed it. Go up one, two, three over one. So we know that our slope is positive three x, and then our y-intercept is at negative one. So this is the equation that we're looking for. And if we're going to get really technical, we can go through and we can write it in the function notation that they're talking about. So we have f of, sorry, the function such that x is converted into 3x minus 1. But you know what, this one is just fine too. But you'll probably see it written like that in the back of the book. All right. Okay, one last quick one. Um, this one isn't actually in the book under the examples, um, but I wanted to uh, give you this one here because it, this one's a little trickier to figure out what the equation of the function is. So it says for the mapping diagram, skip the domain and range um, on a set of axes. So I forgot to write this part down. And we have... Let's see, let's do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Oh, that's a nice one. So, um, negative 2 is going to map to negative 1. Negative 1 is going to map to negative 2. 0 
is going to map to negative 1. Oops, which is already in there, so we don't need to write it again. 1 is going to map to 2. And then 2 is going to map to 7. All right, so sketch the domain and range on a set of axes and then find the equation of the function. So if we are going to let's do this in blue. So if we're going to sketch this thing again, let's just make ourselves a nice little t-chart. Or you can just graph straight from here, and that's fine. x and y. Negative 2 goes to negative 1. Negative 1 goes to negative 2. 0 goes to negative 1 also. And then... 1 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 7. So if we're going to graph that thing, oh man, that's terrible. Not a lot better, but better enough, I guess. So negative 2 to positive 2, and it goes all the way up to 7. And down to negative 2. So negative 2 goes to negative 1. Um, negative 1 goes to negative 2, 0 goes to negative 1, um, let's see, and then we have 1 goes to 2, and then 2 goes to 7. So in, in looking at this, this is not a linear, this one looks more like a uh, quadratic. So if you try to graph this one here, it looks like it's probably going to look something like that. Right? So some kind of parabola. So to come up with our parabola, we can just kind of go backwards from um, what we've done in past chapters. Since we know that the vertex, vertex is at negative 1, negative 2. And we know that we've got y equals our slope from the first from the vertex up to the next point is one, so it's positive one. And I'm gonna have x to parabola, so it's gonna be something squared. And then it goes to the left one, so that means we actually have to put plus one here. And then it goes down two, so we have to put minus two there. And that's our equation if you get something that's not linear. Alright? Um, that should do it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.